Well, cool. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to solve this system by using substitution. And again, when we've talked about applying substitution, we need to isolate a variable. And immediately, we like to choose the variable that has a coefficient of either 1 or negative 1 to isolate. So you can see in this top equation, neither of our variables have coefficients of 1 or negative 1. In this equation, I do have a coefficient of 1, and that's attached to my y. So therefore, that's going to be the variable I'm going to isolate. So I'll just write it over here. I'll just write negative 3x plus y equals 7. Now, isolating this variable, I'll add a 3x to both sides, and I get y equals 3x plus 7. Now that I've isolated my variable, I am just going to now rewrite this equation with the variable isolated. So I write this as y equals 3x plus 7. It's the exact same equation, just written with one variable isolated. So now, remember, by applying substitution, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the value of that variable, as it is an expression, and I'm going to substitute, substitute it into the variable into the other equation. So therefore, I'll have 6x minus 2, and not just times y, but what does y represent? y represents 3x plus 7 equals 5. Okay. So now I need to simplify this because now I need to find the value of x. So now I've created an equation where I have values of x. So now to find the solution, what values of x and y are going to make this equation true, I need to solve for x to get that value. Then I can plug it in and find the value of y. So I'll apply distributive property first. So I get 6x minus 6x, uh, and then minus 14 equals 5. Well, what I see here is I get 6x minus 6x, which is 0x. So therefore, I have negative 14 equals 5. Remember, we're trying to find the value of x that makes this equation true. And I just eliminated my x, because 6x minus 6x is 0x, which is 0. And I'm left with an equation negative 14 equals 5. Well, we know negative 14 does not equal 5. And it doesn't give me a value of x or a value y that I can figure out. So therefore, this is what we call no solution. And therefore, when we have no solutions, if we were going to look at the graph, we know that this graph would be a, uh, a parallel lines. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you solve a no solution problem by using uh, substitution. Thanks.